Hey guys, in this video I'll be discussing biodiversity, loss of habitat, pollution, climate change, and finally a summary. Biodiversity is a really important topic. This is because the future of the human species on Earth relies on us maintaining a good level of biodiversity. So what is biodiversity? Well, biodiversity is a variety of different species that live within an ecosystem. The higher the biodiversity is, the healthier an ecosystem is. This is because the more species there are, the more connections and interactions there are. This makes the ecosystem more stable. For example, an ecosystem containing all of these animals will probably be more stable and healthy than an ecosystem with just a couple of them in. This is because a greater range of species protects an ecosystem from a sudden loss of a single species. So let's consider a net versus a single string as a metaphor. So this net represents a food web and this single string represents a food chain. You can see that the food web or the net looks a lot more complicated than the food chain. If something is removed from the food chain, the food chain may collapse. However, if something is removed from the food web, the food web may still be stable as other options are available and there's a greater chance of that more than one species in the ecosystem can help provide the same resources and conditions. So therefore, more connections in a net mean that cutting a single strand, i.e. or single interaction between species, will not affect the whole structure. But if a single string is cut, this can affect the whole thing. The whole thing may fall apart. More species can also mean more beneficial services for both the ecosystem and for humans. For example, bees are great pollinators and we rely on pollinators to get enough food that we can eat. Herbivores are often used for meat, for example, deer, and bears can control herbivore populations if they get too large. Some plants also contain medicines and may produce fruit and other natural resources. For example, aspirin, which is used to treat fever and is used as a pain reliever, comes from the bark of a willow tree. Loss of habitats can occur through deforestation. This is a permanent removal of large areas of forest. But why does deforestation occur? Well, forests are removed for timber and other resources, which we can use for building things. The land is also repurposed to build farms and cities. However, deforestation reduces the number of trees and the number of animals that are supported by these trees as their food source or home has been lost. And this can in turn affect the predator species and in turn affect the whole ecosystem. Also, farms and cities are much less biodiverse than forests. Forests often have a great number of different species and these all interact in different ways. However, cities may only have a small number of different species or have a lot of one particular species. We need agriculture to feed our population. However, agriculture, and in particular intensive farming techniques, can reduce biodiversity. For instance, farmers remove hedgerows so they can use large machinery. This destroys more natural habitat. So this destroys many plants and reduces the number of things like hedgehogs and mice. Additionally, when farmers use pesticides and herbicides, these kill all species and not just pests. For example, pesticides are normally used to kill pests that feed on the crops. However, they can also kill other insects. This is because pesticides can accumulate in the food chain and kill animals that were not the target of the pesticide. It also removes the food source of some organisms so they die. Herbicides can also indirectly kill other organisms by removing their food source by destroying the plant species which they're targeting. In part one of this video, we discuss biodiversity and why we need high levels of biodiversity. We also discuss some of the ways human activities can decrease biodiversity. Another human activity that can decrease biodiversity is pollution. This is because toxic chemicals often reduce biodiversity. These toxic chemicals are often produced by industrial processes, such as factories. Water pollution can involve fertilizer runoff into rivers and lakes. 
This can cause eutrophication. This is the overgrowth of algae. And this is algae. But why is this a problem? Well, too many nutrients can cause algae in the water to grow uncontrollably. This is called an algal bloom. So you have an unpolluted lake or river and the fertilizer runs off into this and this causes an algal bloom and this leads to eutrophication. This is because the fertilizers encourage the growth of algae and the algae block the sunlight. This means that the plants in the water can't photosynthesize because they don't receive enough light and they die. When the plants die, microorganisms feeding on the dead plants use up all the oxygen. This causes everything else in the water to die. This is because organisms need oxygen for aerobic respiration. So you can see that water pollution can have a huge effect on lakes and rivers. Unfortunately, due to human activities, the climate is changing rapidly. For example, increased use of resources and increased industrial processes lead to more emissions of greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide. This warms up the planet and this causes climate change. Unfortunately, many species can't tolerate these changes and they can't migrate away. For example, the rising temperature means that some habitats previously suitable for the organisms living there are now uninhabitable. Trees cannot migrate or move, so they have to tolerate these changes or die. Some animals may migrate away, but only as far as their habitat reaches. So even if they can migrate, they might not be able to survive. Therefore, these animals go extinct, and this reduces biodiversity. And that's not only a problem for these animals, as we rely on high levels of biodiversity for the survival of the human species. This is why we should do as much as we can to reduce the effects of climate change on organisms around us. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.